but it's I just got the Bass Pro ones that are cheaper. It's uh, in front of the base. There we go. Down a bit. Down a bit. Down a bit. Oh, the name? Yeah. There we go. They're a wide gap worm hook. I will be adding some weight to it because they are pretty light. The fly itself and the hook is a bit on the light side. So I'll start with that. This is good old fashioned lead. Please use non-toxic if you feel the need. Um, I had this from an old lead core line that I scavenged from my days working at sale. So I'm just going to wrap this on. Um, in this case, um, just to keep it from moving and the color, the use black, it's going to blend in with the the hook anyway. So all I'm going to do is spiral some thread on here and I'll slap some head cement on it just to keep it from going anywhere and unraveling on us. Fussy with it. go. Um, I'll, uh, I'll glue it up later. So the thread I'm going to use is just 6 odd olive uni thread. Nothing fancy. You don't need to get too light on your thread. The uh, yarn is pretty bulky so you want to be able to lash it down good and tight. When I cut this yarn off of the ball I either cut it with scissors and melt it right away or use a cauterizing tool just because like I said this stuff likes to unravel so uh, if you don't the it'll it'll split itself in half so two sides will unravel and you'll end up with sort of a, a thin chenille on either side of it and we want this to try and stay together so I'm just stripping off you know, enough to get the strands tied down and I'm going to tie it off onto the back side of the hook and, sorry, uh, the length is five inches. So these ones are larger. I've tied them in three and a half inch version for smallmouth bass. This one in particular is five inches. Uh, this is the original pattern calls for five. Most of the most of the stick worms that you'd find in the store are all five inch. I guess that's just the general consensus among conventional bass fishermen. That's the length that uh, the largemouth bass like. So I've put the shorter section on the back side of the hook. Longer piece, which is twice that's ten inches. I'm going to tie on the front side of the hook. or, well, front side, my side, whichever. Trim the ends off. This stuff is, because it's so bulky and it tends to be a bit messy, you can just, once you've tied the fly off, you can just singe off all the, the loose flyaway ends that go everywhere. So, uh, it helps if you have the hook moved up in your vise a fair bit because we're going to need to wrap yarn eventually underneath the hook point. So instead of having it just in the bend with this one, you want to have it higher up in the hook, upside down. And I'm going to pull the yarn not too tight. You want to leave a little bit of space because, like I said, you're going to, or a little bit of slack because you need to maneuver and wrap it underneath the hook point. And just going to use a clothespin. Use a clothespin. You can use a bulldog clip. Bulldog clip would probably be a little bit better than clothespin, but this will do me for now. And that's just to hold the yarn. That's like a second hand or third hand rather so that I can wrap this because what I'm going to be doing is take the long end wrap it in touching turns uh, six wraps towards the tail 
another six reps, back to the hook, and then I'll take the clip off and I'll continue up the body. So I'll just start the wrapping here. This, you'll find that the, because it's not quite so solid, that the whole thing kind of wants to spring and turn on you. Uh, that's okay, you can just, even if you let go, you can just pull it tight again, it'll sort itself out. Five, and we'll do six. So get to this point. I'm going to pinch where I've stopped wrapping so I can change the, rec the direction back. It's a bit fiddly to do at the start, but once you've done a couple, the yarn in place a bit more. So just wrap, again the pattern says six wraps forward, six wraps back. I don't think you need to be exact. Um, <coughs> the uh, originator of the pattern seemed pretty keen on exact measurements for uh, the length of the yarn and the number of wraps and everything else but I don't think it's quite so necessary. So, last one's around the top. So what I'm gonna do now, I've come to the, the bend of the hook. I'm gonna tuck it around the, the bend under the yarn and slide it back up underneath the hook point and continue the wraps. This part gets a bit tricky to try and keep your wraps touching still. And I tried doing this just holding the yarn up, wrapping it, and then trying to pierce it back. I just trying to pierce the hook point through it. And you never really get the this part tight. Afterwards, it's always got a bit of a uh, a bit of a bow in it, and that kind of defeats the purpose of having the the stiffer body to act as a weed guard. Oh. So, just going to wrap up to the head here. Yeah, that's, I guess, like I said, the the, uh, the guy who came up with this pattern was really keen on measurements. Uh, exact lengths of turns. Yeah. So, got that there. I'm going to cut this off. And like I said, this material ends up being a bit on the the messy side so you sometimes have a bit of cleanup to do at the end depending on how far back you started it. But give yourself a head go on there, tie it off and make sure eye is clear and this isn't, there we go Sometimes it has a bit of a tendency to to want to roll to one side or the other. You can just shove it down the hook a bit. Um, and that won't come off the hook point. No, uh, I've dragged it through some weeds, had some fish hit it, and it it'll slide down, but it won't come up off the point because of because it's wrapped and then tucked underneath the hook point and wrapped again so all the material is is trapped uh, underneath the hook point but I mean there I can lift up and it, it wants to stay sort of in the same place um, the other thing with this because it is synthetic because you can melt it am I? yeah 
you can and the smaller ones I've got a couple smaller ones here that I've tied before that show a bit better um, for tapering it but you can just give it a quick flash with a lighter and sculpt it a bit, give it a bit more of a worm like taper and that's uh, that's that one. Um, you can tie it in different. Uh, this guy's acting up on me. You can tie it in different hook sizes. Again, they called for a one knot, but you could put on a larger hook if you really wanted to. You can tie them smaller. Um, I've got a couple here. You can have a look at in a bit that uh, are about two and a half, three inches long. You fish that on a sinking line, Sean, or? You could fish on a sinking line. You could fish on a floating line too. Uh, yeah, if you want to. That, that, that's enough weight to take it down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> once the yarn gets wet too, it uh, it really uh, really sinks pretty quickly, and the lead the lead on the shank doesn't uh, doesn't hurt either. But yeah, you could fish it. You could fish it on a sinking line if you're fishing around rock piles and docks, or um, sometimes just fishing on a floating line and trying to get your cast up underneath the dock is enough because the bass are going to be sitting down low but they're still looking up to see if any any food falls off the dock for them so you want either one to tell, talk about the colors? yeah I will um, I should have said that at the start the color for this yarn uh, is called green tea and it was it was the first that was the the color that was recommended in the pattern but I've got them if you can you can find all the colors of the yarn there's they've got they had tons and tons of colors and they're all blended so I mean that's that's the brown and the green and then a just a, a cream white um, they did have one that I could not find that was black and blue and it was a great like it was like not so much like a, a faded like a gray or a brown it was a nice true black and blue uh, that can be a really deadly color for smallmouth bass but I could not find it in that color unfortunately um, comes in mixes of pink and fuchsia coral pink and orange um, I don't remember. There was, there was yeah, the, the, probably a list of about 15 different colors that it yeah, originally came in, but uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty tough to to find now, unfortunately. Yeah.